Hello and welcome to Inkscape for Teachers. I had a request from Jose to um, produce a video showing how to make a net for uh, a prism or um, in this case some polyhedra as well. So I thought I'd uh, do that now. There's the net for a dodecahedron, a cube. You can even get pictures in uh, Inkscape for the uh, finished model. And there's a pyramid. So I might uh, just move over to a blank area and press 1 to zoom 1 to 1 and let's start let's start with a simple cube if I click the rectangles tool here and then control shift and drag out I can drag out a square it often helps to have uh, you know exact uh, side lengths you can see I've selected the select tool but I can see the width and height up here let's make it 30 and click this little padlock to make it uh, the proportions um, remain the same. So if I type in 30 there and press enter there I've got an exact side length. You don't have to do that but I find it helps later on when you you might want half the size you can just type in 15 for example. Okay click that and control D produces a copy over the top then control drag down and it snaps into place. Now if yours isn't snapping make sure you've got the snap to paths tools on and uh, snap to pardon my phone there snap to cusp nodes I've got midpoints there, that's handy, and snap to centres, but uh, they're the main ones I use. Once again, control D for that one, and control drag, that constrains it to vertical. Um, to move around the screen, I'm just holding the mouse wheel down and dragging around. Again, control D, and there we go. This one, control D, and I'll drag to the right. Whoops. Um, I've mucked that up. Control Z if that ever happens. Let's see if I can drag it now. Yeah, don't even have to hold down control if the snapping is working well. Control D and drag that one. Okay, so there's my net for a cube. If you want to do tabs, there are different ways you can do that. Uh, let's just, um, I might just produce half a tab. So B for the Bezier pen tool. And I'll snap on the, move to I snap on the midpoint. Click that. And then control to drag up vertically. I'll just mouse wheel to zoom in. Uh, control to drag up vertically, so click there, then control, holding that control keeps you horizontal or vertical, click there, and then maybe down to the corner, press enter when you're finished, select tool, now control D, I'm going to reflect that in a vertical axis, using that icon there, and drag it across, and shift click to select both, and then control shift plus merges them into one, so there's a tab. If you zoom in you can see, you know, with sharp corners that can often look a bit messy, so what I'll do is I'll select the whole lot under the fill and stroke tab control shift F to bring that up if you haven't got it stroke style I'll just select rounded corners there you can see now if I zoom in that looks a bit better okay now if you want uh, more tabs click that control D again and it's snapping to the center there which is what I don't want but I can zoom in and snap it to where I want and control D again and so forth. If you want to turn off the midpoint snapping you can do that but remember you might need it later on. Uh, control D and I'll rotate that using the uh, 90 degree rotation and it can help you there. Luckily these don't overlap so I've chosen a reasonable angle. Control D for that one, reflect it and over there. And you can keep going and building it up that way. I'll delete all that now because I've got it uh, over here you can see to colour them um, actually I shouldn't have deleted I want to show how I colour them Control Z uh, what I like to do is I select everything and give it a white fill that just means that um, then you can click on it and select it without that I'll go Control Z you can see I can't select I'm clicking but I'm not selecting so giving it a white fill makes things easy to select and then you can just click on them and give them the fill that you want uh, just click on it and then the colours down here and so forth build that up okay I'll delete that but what about if you want something more complicated like a dodecahedral net well use the polygon tool over here and select uh, five corners and zeros everywhere else and the polygon tool there and click and drag control shift I think if you don't do that it, oh no you can don't have to do control shift and you just drag it out and uh, it's often hard to get it uh, horizontally or sitting on a flat bottom there so what I do is I go up to the rulers here and drag a ruler down until it snaps to a corner now it's not snapping so I'll turn on guide snapping 
uh, and now it snaps. Now if I click on the shape a second time, you can see the rotation center, I'll drag that down to where the corner hits the guideline and then I can drag a corner and snap it that way. I found that useful. If you can't see the rulers to drag guides from, just go to view, um, uh, let's see, show hide and make sure rulers has got a tick there. Okay, but what if we want that uh, to be the same side, size as the square? We might have other nets that we want size to match on. I'll show you that while we go in it, and no, we don't need it for a dodecahedron because it's only got uh, one shape. What I'll do is I'll drag the square over, let's say, I'll control click there, it's a group, I'm just control clicking to select an object within a group. Control C and control V over here. You can see this is far too big. Now what I'll do is I'll drag guides from the ruler over here and snap them to the sides of the square. It's a little bit fiddly but I'll find this very exact. And the other side like that. Now I'm going to turn midpoint snapping back on there and I'll drag this uh, pentagon so it snaps to the midpoint of the square. Now if I control shift and drag from a corner oops, control Z uh, let's just click that again, click it once, click it twice ah, the centre of rotation was still at the corner because I used that to straighten it. I'm going to shift click that little cross you can see here it's a bit hard to see, if I shift click the little cross it puts it back in the centre. Now I'll um, click on this until I get the rotation handles sorry not the rotation handles, just once and control shift and drag down, eventually you'll see it trying to snap, oh it's a midpoint snapping there, ah, that's a, an edge I'm trying to get these corners here, I'll just do it there ah, there it is, if you zoom in on the bit you're interested in and it snapped uh, a corner there which of course is the 10 is the um, same size as the square 30mm okay, so now if I drag that down that'll be an exact fit if I was building up other nets anyway, ignore all that if it was a bit fiddly if you just want a dodecahedron and well, I'll give that a fill and control D to duplicate and you might want to join them up now of course there's a gap there so what I do is I click on the second one and there's the rotation center again I drag it to the corner there and then that allows me to drag around until it snaps I think I don't have to do that once because everything else will be one of these two dodeca not dodecahedrons, two pentagons to build up the dodecahedron click on that one, control D you can see I can start building up control D control D and work my way around and to save time I'll make a group out of that so I'll select it all, control G for a group control D to duplicate the whole group and I need to join this one up now I don't see, it's, there's no side that's uh, going to join up properly, if you look over here it's a uh, a, f a horizontal line there where it joins for that pentagon uh, so what I'll do is I'll reflect it up reflect it that way and okay there we go so you're not going to achieve what you want with reflections and there's my dodecahedron net control G to group the lot and if you wanted tabs on that uh, one way to do it is uh, the Bezier pen tool or B. I'm just going to click somewhere in the side there, click and snap to the side, click and then enter, select tool and then I'm just going to drag that you know, to about there and now if, if I select it first then N for the node tool, you can see there are nodes on the end but with those nodes visible hit B for the Bezier pen tool, go over till it highlights red and then it will connect so click, click and enter, over here click, click and enter and that's all joined up so that's uh, now nicely done now I can rotate that, uh, it'll be um, I think it's 108 degrees for a pentagon or you can just control D to duplicate drag it up to there, click it a second time to get the rotation handle, drag the rotation handle to here and then rotate it around and if it doesn't seem to snap you zoom in and often it will do that so you can do that sort of thing and build up tabs around it 
I don't use tabs, I don't draw the tabs because when I cut out the models I just cut them out roughly and glue them on the inside anyway where they're not visible. Okay, finally the uh, triangular prism here, let's start with a square. Um, why I did that, one way is again B for the Bezier pen tool, snap to the midpoint there, click, hold down control and click and then enter, that's just setting my height and reference points. I'm using this as a guide effectively. So now again Bezier pen tool, if I start from the square, perhaps go left to right, up to here and then back till it's red, click and it will close itself. Pick a colour if you want to, I could have deleted the line first, but uh, if you want to do that, drag it out of the way and delete it, and snap that back. Often when I'm building up shapes I rotate copy, so if I click that again, centre of rotation is there, drag it to the centre of the square. Now if I go to the uh, transform menu, control shift M, think of M for move, and under rotate, I'll set an angle of 90 degrees, Control D to duplicate that pink triangle and then apply it rotation. Control D apply, Control D apply, and you can uh, build up a net for a py uh, pyramid like that. Once again, if you did want tabs, I'd probably just draw a line parallel to this side, starting in there maybe. Click, click, enter. Back to the select tool, drag it out a bit. In for the node tool to see those nodes, then B for the Bezier pen, hover over till it's red and connects. Click, click, enter, click, click, enter, back to the select tool and here I probably don't need to rotate, I can just control D to duplicate and reflect it using this icon here then drag it around. Um, you could also use this control D and rotate it that way and you can see you can uh, use reflections to good effect there. Oops that missed a bit you can see, now that's better. I can control D to copy that one in place and reflect it in a horizontal axis and drag it up, oops, control Z, drag that one up to there and go and build up a net that way. So there's one way you can do uh, nets for pyramids, cubes and a dodecahedron. If you want to know how I got these pictures here of uh, the completed models, just briefly under extensions and render 3D polyhedron model file you can select a uh, you know, cube or dodecahedron whichever it is there's dodecahedron under view you can set these angles you might want to play around with those I've set those for a cube but um, I'll just uh, look up I wrote down what the angles were for a good view of the dodecahedron it was X Y and Z naught 36 and 18 so here X here Y, and that one Z, this one was naught, this one was 36, and this one was 18. You can play around with that. I find this a bit hard, so that's why I wrote down the values once I got it. Uh, click Apply, it'll work away, and I'll close, and there's a nice view of the dodecahedron. You can change the colours, of course, you know, by clicking on a face. It's actually a group, so if I clicked on a colour there, it would change the whole lot. Control Z. If you just want that face, just control click it and you can do that. If you want to darken it up, under fill and stroke, uh, under fill, I use the HSL tab there and the darkness here, you can sort of drag it across and make it a bit darker or whatever. Anyway, there's uh, a few of the techniques that I use in uh, making up polyhedra. I've probably gone a bit quickly. If you have questions, uh, don't hesitate to let me know. I can explain uh, in a bit more detail if needed. Once again, thanks for watching. Bye for now.